Tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern over on Jaguar Gator 8, a new college football video drops. Also at 9 p.m. Eastern, join me live on Twitch where we'll talk about anything and everything in our weekly Q&A stream. Link to join below. And now, on with our feature presentation. I want you to imagine this insanely bizarre scenario taking the upcoming 2022 season into account. On January 1st, 2023, in Week 17, the Miami Dolphins will be traveling on the road up to Foxborough to take on the New England Patriots in an AFC East rivalry game. Obviously, playing in New England in January, it is probably going to be cold. You're going to be bundling up. You're going to be able to see your breath. And you might even deal with freezing rain or snow. Now imagine if the Dolphins, upon finding this out, said, we don't like that. We don't like playing in the cold, and we think it's unfair. And they asked the Patriots in the NFL to switch the schedule so that the game would be in Miami, and that the Week 1 game, instead of being in Miami, would be in New England. I think everyone would rightfully laugh at the Dolphins' management, would look at them like they had five heads, and would ridicule them for days. You're requesting that the NFL change a game because of the weather? And I'm not talking about a natural disaster like asking the league to move a game up or move it to a different location because there's a hurricane about to ravage the city. I'm not talking about something like that that comes up suddenly. I'm talking about asking for the game to get moved months in advance because it might be a little too cold that day. Well, as ridiculous and as stupid as that sounds, and trust me, it sounds stupid, in 1988, Washington actually tried to request this. They saw the schedule. They realized that there might be a problem that they didn't want to deal with, and they asked their opponent to switch the site of the game, which did not work out at all. Because let's just say that in 1988, Washington, and in particular, head coach Joe Gibbs, was less than thrilled with the idea of playing early in the season in Phoenix. And this is the story behind the absolutely bizarre schedule request that had incredibly predictable and unsuccessful results. Before I talk about the request in question, we need some context to understand the landscape of the NFL, as well as why this was even a concern in the first place. The year is 1988, and it's a brand new era in the NFL, because in 1988, for the first time ever, there was going to be a team playing their games in Arizona. After 28 seasons in St. Louis, where they shared Bush Stadium with the baseball Cardinals, the football Cardinals decided to pack their bags and move to Arizona. I'm not going to dive too much into the specifics of what happened with that move, because that's not the purpose of this video. But even despite the move to Phoenix, the Cardinals were going to remain in the NFC East. Makes perfect sense to have the Atlanta Falcons playing in the NFC West, and the Phoenix Cardinals in the NFC East. But horrible geography aside, this meant that the Cardinals, just like every other full season, were going to play Dallas, Washington, Philadelphia, and New York twice, with one game being at home, and one game being on the road. And when the schedule came out, the date that both Phoenix and Washington were circling was September 25th, 1988. Because on that day, Washington would be playing its first ever game in Arizona, while Phoenix would not only be looking to get revenge on Washington for sweeping them last year, but would be looking to knock off the defending Super Bowl champion, as Washington was coming off of their second Super Bowl ever after defeating Denver the previous year at Super Bowl 22. This game was also notable because this was the first game that the Cards would be playing directly in the Arizona Sun. Remember that back in 1988, they played their games at Sun Devil Stadium, an open-aired stadium with nothing but metal bleachers. The league recognized that playing games in Arizona was going to be a bit of a challenge early on in the season because of the heat, as everyone in the world knew that Arizona was hot around this time of year. So the league designed a schedule that was intentionally centered around not having the Cardinals play games when it was brutally hot. This meant either playing on the road, as they would do in Week 1 against the Cincinnati Bengals and Week 3 against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, or playing a home game at nighttime, as they would do in Week 2 against the Dallas Cowboys on Monday Night Football. As a side note, to learn more about that Monday Night Football game and what has to be one of the worst fake field goals in the history of the NFL, click the card in the upper right corner. And the league did this for years. In 1989, the Cardinals played their first three games on the road, and their home opener wasn't until Week 4 against the San Diego Chargers, which was on October 1st. In 1990, not only did the Cardinals play their first three games on the road, but their fourth game was at home on Sunday Night Football, and Week 5 was a bye, so their first afternoon game at home wasn't until October 14th in Week 6. 
Their first afternoon home game in 1991 was on September 29th in Week 5. Their first afternoon home game in 1992 was on October 4th in Week 5. Their first afternoon home game in 1993 was on October 10th in Week 6. You get the idea. The NFL knew what Arizona weather was like, and it was pretty much an unspoken rule to not schedule the Cardinals at home in the afternoon until, at minimum, the last week in September. However, you couldn't avoid playing in Arizona and couldn't delay the inevitable. Eventually, you were going to have to play a game in the afternoon there, because there's only so many road games in a row you can play, and there's only so many times you can put the Cardinals in prime time at home. For the 1988 season, this happened to be week four during that September 25th game between Phoenix and Washington. Now, the odd part is that the schedule came out all the way back on April 5th, so it's not like this was a surprise schedule drop in the same realm as a surprise Drake album drop. We knew for months, literally five and a half months, that Phoenix and Washington would be playing on this state. And for three months, there was no issue with this whatsoever. Joe Gibbs never said anything, the organization never said anything, and all was good and dandy. But for some reason, in July... Three months after the schedule came out, Washington realized something. Oh crap! Arizona is really hot. You'd think someone would have figured that out by this point, because it's not like he had to go on an expedition Lewis and Clark style to search for the unknown land of Arizona and document its climate. Everyone knew that Arizona was hot. Maybe it's because it was getting hot in the summertime in D.C., and they realized that if it was hot now, and players were struggling, which is natural anyways as training camp starts and players need to get back his game shape, that it was going to be brutal in Arizona, 2,300 miles to the west, and way closer to the equator. Because of this, Joe Gibbs called up the Cardinals and asked for a favor. We don't know how the exact conversation went, but it probably went something along the lines of, Hey, so we're supposed to play you guys in Arizona on September 25th. You're supposed to play us up in D.C. on October 16th. Want to switch the dates, just because it's going to be way too hot for us? Let's put you in the hot seat millionaire style. Take a wild guess as to what Phoenix's response was. Did they A. Accept the offer, B. Decline, but say that they were going to build an artificial forest and invest billions of dollars into that to try and defeat Mother Nature and to try and outsmart the desert, C. Graciously accept, and even go as far as offering to play both games in D.C., since it might still be too hot in October, or D, laugh in their face and tell them to shove it. If you guessed option D, congratulations, because their response was about as predictable as you could imagine. Now, before I go any further and talk about what specifically the Cardinals and their brass said, I should note that swapping home dates with teams is not a foreign concept and is something that has happened before. Just to give a few examples, in 1979, Philadelphia was supposed to play Washington at RFK Stadium on October 7th and at Veterans Stadium on October 21st. However, the teams flipped dates because Pope John Paul II was holding a mass in D.C. and it would have been way too chaotic. In 1976, the Cardinals were supposed to play the Eagles in Philadelphia on October 10th and in St. Louis on November 7th. However, the teams flipped dates because the Phillies shared a stadium with the Eagles. The Phillies made it to the NLCS and this resulted in a stadium conflict, with the Phillies needing the stadium that day. And in 1973, the New England Patriots were supposed to play the New York Jets in New York on October 14th and in Boston on November 11th. However, the team has flipped dates because the Jets shared a stadium with the Mets, the Mets made it to the World Series, and this resulted in a stadium conflict. You get the idea. Games changing sites and flipping locations was a rare occasion, but it wasn't entirely uncommon. However, when it happened, it was because of an unavoidable schedule conflict. It wasn't because the visiting team didn't want to play in the weather and just didn't feel like going. So as you can probably expect, when Washington made this request and asked the Cardinals if they wanted to swap dates to avoid this, they emphatically declined. They had no incentive whatsoever to do this. Kurt Mosher, the Vice President of Administration for the Cardinals, said quite bluntly on the request, It won't happen. A schedule is a schedule. And he wasn't the only one who felt that way. Owner Bill Bidwell said that he was amused and was confused as to why Washington even wanted this, saying that they're training in weather a lot hotter than ours, and they should be more accustomed to the heat than our people. One thing not mentioned in that quote 
about Washington actually benefiting from the schedule the way that it was set up having to play Arizona in September was the fact that if Washington got its request granted and they got that road game in week seven instead of week four, this would mean that they would play four consecutive road games from week six to week nine. As in that stretch, they would have had to travel to Dallas, Phoenix, Green Bay, and Houston. Why would you willingly subject your team to four consecutive road games and four weeks away from home, especially with all four of those games taking place outside of the Eastern time zone? That just doesn't make any practical sense. But we're not done ridiculing Washington, because the hits just kept on coming from other members of the Cardinals organization who couldn't believe the audacity of their opponent. Because last but certainly not least, it was time for Pro Personnel Director Larry Wilson to get in on the fun of taking a swing at the defending champion. He said that the request was silly, and outright questioned why the team would do it, as he was worried about the precedent that it would set. As Wilson said, some teams have to go to Green Bay in December. They might say, gee whiz, my guys might get frostbite. Let's change. And perhaps most importantly in all of this, they knew about the date of this game since the start of April. If it was that big of a concern, why not bring it up then? Why wait until the season is about to start when tickets have already been sent out to season ticket holders and when people have already bought tickets instead of doing it right then and there? It's not like Arizona magically transformed into a desert in those three months. There was absolutely no urgency whatsoever from Washington to do this because if it was that big of a concern for something that was entirely foreseeable unless you've been living under a rock, you should have raised this issue then instead of waiting until the last possible minute. Needless to say, the schedule swap did not happen. Phoenix played Washington down at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe on September 25th, much to the dismay of Joe Gibbs and company. And the Cardinals had all the bulletin board material and psychological advantages that they needed because you can bet that their coaching staff was telling them in the locker room that their opponent was scared of the heat. They were so scared that they literally tried to change the game. Sure enough, on this 84 degree day, Phoenix came out on top, winning it by a final score of 30 to 21. Even though the Cardinals trailed 14-9 at the half, they scored 21 of the final 28 points and used the heat to their advantage by keeping Washington on the field through their ground game as the Cards finished with 185 yards, with their leading rusher, Earl Farrell, picking up 108 yards on 5.7 yards per carry. Safe to say that both on and off the field, the advantage in this one went to the Cardinals, and Washington was thankful that they wouldn't have to play in Arizona for the rest of the year. So what's the moral of the story? I'm not necessarily mocking someone for wanting to make accommodations or request a schedule change, even if it might be stupid in this context. If you can provide a good and logical reason as to why you want it done, fine. But if you're going to do this, then don't wait until literally the last possible moment to do so. If you know that Arizona is hot, you know that Arizona is a desert, and you know that you don't want your team playing in the middle of the afternoon in September in a desert for safety reasons or something else, don't wait until three months after you found out that information to raise a complaint. Especially if that complaint is about a condition that was entirely foreseeable. When you're the defending champions and you're on top of the world, there's a lot that you aren't scared of. But for Washington, there was one thing that terrified them, and that was a Sunday afternoon in September in Arizona. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL Trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar9. To see college football videos, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.